all the faults. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Jenny, and thank you. Well, thank you for the invitation and for the organization. Uh, so, today I will speak about a joint work with uh, Thomas Pruske, and uh, the aim is to combine two different constructions. So, okay, sorry. So, the first one is uh, The first one is due to Python and Hitman, and this is a kind of skew group algebra. So it's an old work by Python and Hitman from the 80s. And to learn that an algebra uh, together with a group action, with the action of a finite group, G, we can associate uh, a new algebra, lambda G, which is called the skew group algebra, and to this algebra we can also construct network functors uh, between db lambda and db lambda g and some of the varieties that if you know enough db lambda and if you know enough the g action then you get lots of uh, properties for the, the category db lambda g. So the second construction uh, goes back to Sibelius uh, series of stores and mental algebra so it's about the, the geometric for the derived category of the gentle algebra. And so this is due to upper Lamadon and Schramm. Um, okay, and just to, to to give uh, a good here, so to lambda, lambda gentle, we associate different different geometric objects. So first, a marked surface. together with D, a dissection, and here I will only deal with uh, the red dissection of stimulus stock, so it, is, it will be more drawn dissection, but anyway, it's just a collection of curves that converts the surface into, into polygons, and also a line field on the surface. Okay. So this is, uh, the idea is to combine the two ideas, so to use this geometric model, and if we have an action of a group on the gentle algebra, we can form this Q-group algebra of this gentle algebra, and we wonder, well, can, is it possible, from these two constructions, is it possible to get a, a nice geometric model for the corresponding category of db lambda g? Uh, so, just... Let me start with uh, the, the precise definition of screw group algebras. So we start with lambda, a K algebra. K here is K is a field, and we take a finite group acting on lambda by automorphism. And such that the cardinal of G uh, is invertible in the field. And the definition is as follows. So we define the skew group algebra lambda G to be 
So it's a picture space, it's just not a uh, tensor over k of the group algebra kg, and we define the following multiplication. So lambda tensor g times lambda prime tensor g prime is lambda g of lambda prime g g prime. So it's really a, a semi-direct product of, of the algebra by, by the group. And then it's easy to see that lambda g is naturally a left lambda module just by sending lambda to lambda tensor 1g. Okay, so this is a, a natural polymorphism from lambda to lambda g, and we, then we obtain functors. Uh, from db lambda to db lambda g by taking the tensor product left derived tensor product by lambda g and the restriction function. Okay, and these functors, so I've been described by Reiten uh, and Hitman, uh, and they have very nice properties. Uh, Okay, and so moreover, if, if, G, if G is, is abelian, we, we have the following construction. So we can denote uh, G hat as a joint group, so the character group, so. And, and then it has naturally um, Lambda G by so if I take a character and I apply it to a tensor lambda G, I define it to be pair of G times lambda G. Okay, so it defines an action of, of the, the dual group and the proposition is as follows. Uh, so it's due to right and Hitman. So if G is a billion, then uh, so if we form the the skew group algebra of the skew group algebra, so we, we do lambda G uh, G hat, then it's more equivalent to the algebra lambda. Okay, so let me show you an example to see how it works. Uh, so, example. Okay, so first, a very simple example, but which is useful to understand. So we start with just as uh, a group Z2. Uh, and we assume that it acts on k, on lambda being just k, uh, with a trivial function. Then what is lambda g? So lambda g uh, is just two copies of k. And then we have this, uh, this action of the dual group, so which is again z2. And if you try to understand how G2 acts, uh, Z2 acts on, the, on this lambda G, then the action really uh, is, well, so it's not, I mean, up to change the basis of K2, it acts by permuting the coordinates. So when you 
then compute the, the double skew group algebra, let's say, uh, lambda g g hat. So you obtain a, a dimension 4 algebra, which is n2 of k matrix algebra, and then, of course, it's more equivalent to k, but not, but not isomorphic. Okay, so this is how it works, and of course, we cannot expect uh, more than this numerical equivalence just by a question of dimension. It's clear. Um, so let, let me give you another example. So now we take lambda to be uh, a path algebra of the following quiver. So we still take g to be uh, uh, z2, and now we take the, the following quiver. Uh, and then, uh, so here, I, I, yeah, the, the action of Z2 is just by permuting uh, the vertices plus into minus. And so, now what happens if you compute lambda G? So lambda G is not a quiver algebra anymore, but up to more it equivalence, it is a path algebra with quiver. And this is typically the situation of upstairs. So, when, so concerning the vertex 1, so you see that you have two copies of K. Okay, you have these two copies of K and, and they are permuting. So, when you locally sort of compute the skew group algebra of this, then you get uh, the 2 by 2 matrices, which is more eta equivalent to K. So, in fact, between this, these two vertices, up to more eta equivalence, you just obtain one vertex in the corresponding lambda g algebra. And it's the same for 2. And for 3, so now 3 is, uh, is fixed by the action. And then we are in the first situation. So z2 acts trivially on, on the, this vertex 3. So then we get two copies of 3 and with uh, is an action of Z2 of these two copies. So this is the quiver that we obtain here. So this is the knowledge point I and this is uh, this algebra. Okay, so now the idea is, is really to apply this to gentle algebra but in a in a geometric way. So we want the action to come back from an action at the geometrical level of, of this geometric model. So, okay. So now I will uh, I will recall a few things of, of a similar talk. So, recall. Okay, so to lambda, a gentle algebra. We associate uh, a marked surface. Together with a collection of parts, which is called uh, dissection. And let me uh, recall more precisely how it works. I mean, if we do the converse construction, so this construction is really, uh, you can start with a dissection, and uh, it's, it's really a bijection between the, the dissected surfaces and gentle algebra. So, if you have, uh, so if, if you have a red arc here in the, in the dissection, and a configuration like this, then the corresponding quiver goes uh, from here by the, the direction. Okay. 
Okay, so you obtain a quiver like this, so which is so you, you put a vertex associated to each red arc, and then when you uh, cross, when, when you change the polygon, then you get a zero relation. So because this red dissection is really the dual dissection of, of Sibelius uh, talk, but this is how it works, and this is why you get a gentle algebra. And from the gentle algebra, you can also uh, recover the map surface together with the dissection. Um, okay, so now we want to to uh, to have a nice action at the geometric level. So let's do the following remark first. So if we start with G, a subgroup of the homeomorphism of the surface uh, preserving globally the marked point. And such that uh, for any element in the group, sigma of the dissection is the dissection, that, so that it preserves globally the dissection. And then it's easy to see that uh, G acts on, on the quiver of lambda first, and in fact it preserves also the, the, the relation. So it acts directly on lambda by automorphism. So this is the situation we want to study, and we we just consider like the simplest case, but which is in fact uh, more than enough to consider. So. So we we take G to be a static group of order two, so it's generated by a, an element sigma is sigma squared in the identity of S. And with finitely uh, many fixed points. Okay, so this is uh, the situation we, we are looking at. And, uh, let me show you an example. So here we start with uh, The following mark surface, so we take a, a disk together with six mark points and with the following dissection. Okay, and here you see that you have a natural action of, of the central symmetry on it. On it. Uh, so which is of order two, and so let me draw the corresponding quiver. So we have one plus two plus three, two minus one minus, and the quiver is like this. So we have the same path algebra as the previous example. And uh, so what happened? What we can do here is to form the quotient of SM by the automorphism, the, the homeomorphism sigma, and what we obtain is something which has a no default structure. So, because this action has a fixed point which is here center of the disk and so around this uh, so if we, if we model by this uh, this homeomorphism so around this uh, this point you, you don't have uh, so it's it's you have uh, angle pi around this so it's not it's not completely a surface so 
here the other part is like this so okay so why, why did I do I just take took a fundamental domain of uh, of uh, of the this SM so fundamental domain will be just part of the disk and then I have to I will just uh, move this to this because under sigma they are identified and what I obtain is again a disk this one and this three becomes this uh, this this new this new R which is a sort of a special R and uh, so what what we want to do now is to associate a quiver to this so we associate a quiver like this so one two three and we associate two vertices uh, to this new special arc and this is what we get okay so this is just an example but i, I will make it a bit more precise later and uh, so what we, the first reason we, we proved with uh, this thermal transfer is the following. So we proved that, uh, so from this lambda here, uh, and from the action of sigma, we, we get a natural action uh, of Z2 on lambda. And if we, if we form the skew group algebra of lambda, uh, we obtain uh, up to Morita equivalent, so is Morita equivalent to uh, a skewed gentle algebra. So I identify a skewed gentle algebra, but I, I will tell you in a minute. And, and this is not, of course, this is not a surprise, but the skew gentle algebra is a skew algebra of a gentle algebra. But, uh, uh, maybe more inter interesting is that all skew gentle algebras are obtained. In this way. So I will make this statement a bit more precise in a minute. Okay, so let me first um, tell you a few words on skewed gentle algebra. So skewed gentle algebra is a class of algebras defined by uh, Guys and De La Pena in the 90s. And uh, I, I won't give you uh, the precise definition. It's a it's a bit technical, and well, I mean, of course, by the name you can guess that it was constructed as skew group algebra of gentle algebra, sure. But uh, the definition is not really given that way. It's more uh, 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 as the definition of gentle algebra. It tells you how locally your algebra can look like, and but just. Um, what is important to know about skewed gentle algebra is that first it's a generalization of gentle algebra, so it contains all gentle algebras. It also contains algebras of type dn or dn tilde, but only with uh, symmetric orientation. So what is symmetric orientation? So it's really mean that in the in the DN uh, you want that this, these two arrows point in the same direction. So this is good but this wouldn't be good. Okay. So this is um, this is not skewed gentle, but the first one is uh, skewed gentle. Okay, and it also contains uh, 
Son kind of cool uh, animals called Yarrows. So that are of this type, so okay. something like this. And so here uh what are the relations? So in uh, in contrary to gentle attributes, for skewed gentle attributes, uh, the relation are not uh, one of the quadrant one of the more. So you may have uh, anti commutative square and in this diamond all the square are anti commutative, so meaning that this plus this is zero or this plus this is zero or this plus this is zero and so on. So this is uh, this is what is a gallon and basically if you sort of glue all this configuration together you get on skew gentle algebra. Yeah. Yeah. It's Okay, so this was a rough idea of what we can do to change the algebra. And um, okay, so just coming back to the, the previous position that I said that uh, all skew gentle algebra are in this way, so what does it mean? It means that if we start with the skew gentle algebra, so first what we can do is to construct something similar to this. So now we found a, a surface together with some special points that are called different points. And then from this data, we can sort of unfold this orbifront and obtain a nice gentle algebra together with a, with a nice uh, with a nice homeomorphism of order two. So okay, let me give you more detail detail about this. So to gentle. Uh, Okay. So one point associate the mark surface uh, with all different points. So that I will do it by S M and and so here's a set of mark points, so they can be in the interior or on the boundary. And this is the set of all different points that they do not use across. And a special case, a uh, special kind of uh, dissection that we can call a cross dissection. So this uh, was, I should say, now, I think. So, this construction, so the fact that we can associate such a data, such a combinatorial or topological data to a skewed gentle algebra was also uh, done by uh, Daniel Labardini, Sibyl uh, Hall, and the idea of Okay, but they they in their uh, in their paper they don't don't use uh, two group algebra structure of two gentle algebra. They only uh, sort of work at the level of forty fold, but not at the level of uh, double cover of this forty fold. So the the point of view is quite different. And the description here is completely the same. So, what is uh, so what is a, a cross dissection? So it's like a dissection, but it cuts out the surface into 
Polygon. That is Polygon. Uh, all of these forms. So, so, so it's made for the basic shape, but you want exactly one boundary segment uh, on each polygon here. Then if you have a cross, oh. so if you have some open for the point, uh, they have exactly fancy one, so they are linked to the relation between your realities. Okay, so this is, I mean, if you uh, remove the red R, so this is still. Okay, so uh, from this uh, from this data, how do we get the two different parts? So let me give you just how we get the quiver because the preservation is a bit more complicated than technical, but it's not so important. Um, okay, so if we have so for each uh, normal say arc like this, so we we uh, we put a, we put one vertex of the quiver, and so if we have a configuration like this, then it corresponds just one row between these two row consecutive arcs. So if we are in a configuration like this, so with a normal arc and the next one is a cross arc then so to each cross arc we we just get two two vertex and so here this is a configuration we get and also in the common direction of course and finally if we have two consecutive uh, cross arc then what we get is so we get two Vertices for this arc, two vertices for this arc, and what we get is uh, locally is a, is a piece of garland, something like this. Okay, so this is uh, how we get the cover from uh, this cross section. And what we immediately see is that um, when we have a student algebra, it comes uh, naturally. With a Z2 option. So, what is this Z2 action? So, it's just the action of, of uh, permuting the vertices. with these uh, special arcs, these cross arcs, mm -hmm. and this gives a natural uh, Z2 action on the quiver of the student and algebra, but uh, the relations are always symmetric with respect to this action. So what we do is that uh, from, from this uh, geometrical data, from this S, M, 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 D, these two sort of mark, mark points, uh, we construct the two fold over. And the third point is tilde. And the way we, we construct it is really a sort of we cut the surface, uh, and then we, we we cut the surface along certain curves, and then we take another copy of the surface and we glue together uh, the two surfaces we have So I don't put much detail on this, but so by Cut, copy and paste from this. And 
saying this two font cover uh, comes naturally when we say this sigma of order two and uh, the fixed fonts are exactly the only font fonts to the cross font. So such that uh, this is the same as S as other font. Yes. As the other font. Okay, so for example, just to give an example a bit more complicated in terms of this uh, process. So if we start with, uh, with a, typically with a garment, so we start with a disk and with say four or different points and the following dissection. So this is associated with the following figure. Which is the gamma. So this is A. And if we do this process, so basically what you will do is to cut here, 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 and here. You cut this and one then we repeat. Double the surface and we glue it together so it's quite complicated. And what we get is the following surface so it's a torus with two boundary components, and uh, so both is the same. That is the homeomorphism sigma, is like this, is given by the rotation around this axis, so you can see that we have exactly four uh, fixed points for this action. And so it seems I put only one more point in the boundary like this, and I could draw the, the corresponding direction. This is the thing So this is A, and this is uh, the number junction. So that is the uh, corresponding number back here. So it's given by uh, the quiver is double balance and uh, zero relation matches. Okay. Uh, Okay, and what, what we have shown, uh, okay, for me to say the, the most uh, important thing here, sorry, uh, is that so if we if we do okay, so with A we have this natural Z two action, so what we can form is A Z two, and this is. Morita equivalent to this lambda, the one that comes from this two fold cover as tilde, so the one from, from, from this guy. Okay, and, uh, and again, so now this lambda comes naturally with the Z to action, and the Z to action is also compatible uh, in the sense that. Lambda Z2 is modified equivalent to A. And uh, just a remark uh, about, about this reason is that it's not so clear uh, that this is double modified equivalent. This is not completely a consequence of Wighton Rittman theorem because Wighton uh, Rittman theorem, okay, if I just come back to it. Uh, one minute, so which is this? Okay, so remember we have uh, this is the following equivalence, uh, but 
And the problem is that is that this is only a Morita equivalent and not an eigenmorphism, of course. And uh, so here we have to check somehow that uh, so in this situation we have to check that somehow when we pass to the Morita equivalence uh, the action is preserved and, and that, uh, that we get the, the action we want. So this is quite something because Morita equivalence is, is not an easy concept to, to do this. Uh, okay, so now I will uh, <coughs> Tell you a bit about the main result of the paper. So the main result of the paper is about uh, derived equivalence, uh, derived equivalences for skewed gentle algebra. Um, so just let me recall again from Sibylle's talk. So to lambda gentle again, so we associate this marked surface together with a bisection D and we can also associate a certain line field that is defined uh, on each polygon of the bisection. Okay, so I'm going to here and it's, it's really correspond to, to the light field there as, uh, as here. So it's not defined on the, on the right points, but okay, so this is beta. And so we have the following result. So that was a collaboration with um, this Pierre uh, and which was also shown in the one that I offered. Okay, so we showed that db lambda is uh, equivalent to db lambda prime, so sorry, lambda, lambda prime general algebras. If and only if the corresponding surface is together with the line thing are uh, diffomorphic, so if if an elite exists phi from Sn to S prime and prime uh, such that so if we just take the two part of the line to eta prime so we get like eta but up to homotopy with the line to eta. So in particular, so one in number of incorrectly coincide. And uh, so we have this very, yeah, this nice description, geometrical description of the, of the derived equivalence. So it's very natural to us. And we use the previous construction to get uh, a, a geometric interpretation of derived equivalences for skewed gentle algebra. So now, we start with N skewed gentle. So we have uh, this all before. So S and some basic so from this Constant this double corner S and T Tibia and Sigma. And then from this data we can associate the line T which is eta. And it's completely immediate to see that this line T is a uh, sigma invariant because why well, because just it comes from from D, it comes from D and D is sigma invariant, so the line T is sigma invariant. So, so since it is sigma invariant, it defines a line T on the other front.
Two more different parts. So my friend is here because here you can see this is a this is a common pandemic for for the action. Okay, so this will be this will be S. Yeah. Uh, but this only function phase can also be obtained by some other by taking a value of your phase, which is as follows. Well. So we can take This action as again two fixed points, and here it's maybe less clear, but if you if you want out uh, this surface by this uh, by this action, so here is your final domain and you still open uh, the following the following one um, point. So another question is then uh, to ask what what can we say uh, what does it mean uh, algebraically that what does it mean that we have uh, the same surfaces here and here okay and we have an answer for that so it's given by a second result I got two so we start with two again script of the articles. And we have the following equivalence. So there exists a different morphism from the cover of the two, two articles here. Which commutes with the uh, Z2 action, so with, uh, with the fact that if I do uh, phi tilde sigma is the same as sigma prime phi tilde. Uh, yes. And that also respects uh, the corresponding line field, so, so if I uh, put back this the line field uh, of S prime. Tilda, I get a tomography, I get a So this is equivalent to the following, so something more restrictive than just uh, a direct equivalent. So in fact, so this of course for now, the theorem with a CPU and PRP uh, implies in particular that DB lambda and DB lambda prime, the correct gentle algebra, Uh, are equivalent, but of course here we have more because we have this uh, we have this condition. And this condition, what does it mean? It means that these are C two equivalent, and I will give you the definition in one moment. And this is again equivalent to the fact that D B A and D B A prime are equivalent against C two equivalent. So what, what now what does it mean we see two equivalents? So it means that there exists again um it's C2 invariant invariant object T so this is the definition of this the equivalence uh, such that if we complete the homomorphism algebra of T, it's isomorphic of oh, the sorry. <laughs> sorry for that. Um, okay, it's isomorphic to A prime, but uh, okay. Uh, Okay, so this is of course the equivalent to for the direct category to be the same, but uh, so here we ask more. So the fact that T is equal environment, uh, this implies that you get a natural Z2 
uh, easy to structure on, uh, on, on this algebra. Okay, so this forms naturally this z to action and this z to action really comes so this is some fact very general so it comes from the fact that t is z to environment so then we will have the final z to action on the other part of the algebra and of course uh, this one also is a uh, z to action and we want that this isomorph is a current with z to action Okay, so this is uh, this is what we ask here, and this is what reflects the fact that uh, that okay, this this geometric uh, condition that we ask. And just about just a few words about this equivalence. So this equivalence is, is not only for gentle and split algebra. This is something that we can show more generally. That if you have an action which is nice enough, uh, then the such an equivalence is equivalent to is equivalent to such an equivalence. Okay, so I think it's um, it's time to stop. So thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Matt, 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 for a lovely talk. Um, are there any questions? Uh, feel free to unmute yourself um, if you want to ask a question. Okay, maybe, can I ask a question before I run? Uh, so, is there any hope that by varying this um, structure of a gentle algebra and, and group action, one can actually get all derived equivalences? Uh, yeah, I, 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 yeah, I would like to, to I mean, of course, this, this theorem one is, is not, not so nice because what we have, we, we have this condition, which is not very nice, okay, and not so easy to check in general. So, I mean, in, if we want to understand, if we want to get rid of this, so I, I would hope that this would be still true, but okay. First, there is a fact that skew gentle algebra is not closed under the right equivalence, and then you have to understand. Uh, so here, sort of, uh, what we get is really uh, all the the z two invariant ticking objects, and then you have to discard all the other objects. So one nice thing to do would be to try to understand, to describe explicitly all the teaching objects. And I think this is doable using either what we did or also what uh, Daniel, uh, Sibyl and Yanima did. Uh, so because they, once you know how com to compute the, the indecomposable objects and the homomorphism spaces, you can of course by compute what should be a ticking object and then compute the order of the algebra of these ticking objects and so to enlarge this class of skewed gentle algebra including for instance uh, dn but with non-symmetric orientation and this kind of algebra and hopefully you get the same result but yeah this is still some work to do so it's uh, just yeah, there are things to do, but yeah, I hope this, this work. Okay, I see. Thanks a lot. Uh, okay, so there's, there's a couple of questions um, in the chat. I don't know if you can see them, Claire. Uh, yes. Okay, so. Does the surface the two sets of marks on the digit give a similar model for the direct material student? Uh, yeah, so about uh, Karen's question. Uh, so yes, there is such a model, and this model is given in, in this, the, the start of this, uh, this model 
is given uh, in this paper by a civil engineer and uh, and the people. And so in the paper, they describe, for instance, the decomposable objects in terms of curves into this artifact uh, surface. And in fact, we can also do it uh, with our methods because what well, typically uh, so you have this. Okay, let me Again, uh, so if, if you come back to the very so here uh, we have these nice contours between db lambda and db lambda g, and in fact there are nice properties. In particular, if you know all the decomposable object of db lambda, which is the case for lambda gentle. And if you know the g action on these indecomposable objects, you obtain indecomposable objects of db lambda g. So this would be also another way to describe all the indecomposable objects. And this is done in uh, Python Bitmap's paper. And so this, yeah, then you can you can get uh, uh, this geometric description of, of the category. Uh, for morphism space, it's not done yet, but because, well, I think it's very technical, but it's hardly doable. So, okay. Um, and then, uh, how to describe the environment sub algebra? Uh, okay, this invariant sub algebra. Uh, yeah, I don't really know. Um, so it's not. Yeah, I think it's possible to do it, but I didn't think of that. Um, and then, similar for the last equations, when you say that it comes more generally, does it hold for any other link group acting on the map? Uh, okay. Uh, yes, yeah, so there are some restrictions from the last theorem. Oh, we, we proved it. So what we proved is the following fact. Okay. Uh, slide. Uh, so what we prove is the fact that so if G is abelian and we always assume that it was far right. Mm. Okay, so for infinite, really, I, I have no, no feeling at all. I don't know. But for abelian and finite, so what we can prove is that if db lambda is g equivalent to db lambda prime, then it implies that db lambda g is g hat equivalent to db lambda prime g. Okay? And so this is this holds in, in, in general for this, and then you can apply this uh, Alton Hickman theorem to say that you get uh, dB lambda g g hat dB lambda prime g g hat with g double hat function y, which is g. And this is equivalent to db lambda, this is equivalent to db lambda prime, but it's not clear that in general, um, so this is a multi equivalence here, uh, and it's not clear that the g action, uh, the, so here you have a natural g action, but it's not clear that the g action here is the G action here coming from the first, the, the one you started with. And this is a quite a subtle point. Uh, so, in the case of two gentle attributes, and it works nicely, so in the sense that we can really say, okay, we, we, we really have a, an equivalence here. So, this point was too gentle, but in general, it's not so clear that you can sort of complete this, uh, this diagram.
Yeah. Awesome. So I don't see all your questions. Oh, okay. Thank you. I didn't know. I will show you reference. I will have a look. Yeah, but uh, actually, I know that this this morning type equivalent is uh, easy to manipulate because you make a choice, you make a choice of some item patterns, and you. Uh, it's it's not uh, yeah. You have to make choices, and this is uh, always a good discovery. Okay, are there any other questions? Um, if not, um, let's thank um, Claire again um, for a lovely talk. Thank you. Um, Claire, will you be able to join us on um, Gather Town after the next talk? Uh, it's not so clear, I'm sorry. I don't know.